On this episode of Georgia Traveler, Phil picks up a bow. We take you down a highway full of culinary delights. I hop on a sailboat and head out to the deep blue sea. And guest host Raven Torado heads to a small town that's putting its mark on the map with a well-crafted rum. Foxhall Sporting Club is 1,100 acres of beautiful countryside where any sports enthusiast can learn and play. And believe it or not, this incredible property full of rich landscapes and scenic overlooks is only 25 minutes from the Atlanta airport. Well, Foxhall, before uh, our company purchased the property in 2007, it was an equestrian venue. Uh, it was built in 1993. Uh, by Jim Richards, the son of Roy Richards, founder of Southwire. They built it for the 96 Olympics for the Olympic equestrian team to train here. The stables, all the beautiful fields down below the 400 acres of polo fields, pastures that just make it so different from anything you see around Atlanta. Known as the first urban sporting club in America, Fox Hall provides members and guests access to a boast of sporting activities. The options are limitless. We have every activity someone wants to do, and if we, you have one we don't have, we'll come up with it. What we're best known for right now is our uh, shooting grounds. We have a 15-station Beretta Trident Sporting Clays course. The shooting grounds is open to the public. We have uh, ATV rides that, uh, that people can come out and enjoy. And then all the other activities from the, uh, the fishing, the golf driving range, the swim and tennis, uh, is all available to the group groups to come out and have events out here as well as our membership program. Individuals can come out and get a social membership that gives them access uh, to all the facilities, activities, and amenities. Archery is one of the programs we put in place not knowing how uh, how people would react, how many people would want to be interested. Most people have tried it at camp, but other than that, uh, haven't had much exposure to it. And it's become one of the most popular activities out here for our members and guests. Archery? Now that's what I'm talking about. I met up with the head outfitter, Ryan Snyder, and we headed out for the range. Uh, Ryan, this brings back memories, man. Mm -hmm. One of my first merit badges as a Boy Scout was in archery. I loved it, man. I'm about ready. Oh, uh, well. Right before you start, let's go ahead and go over some few safety rules before you get started. Yes, yes. Why don't we go over those safety rules, okay? <laughs> All right. If you don't mind, we'll borrow your bow from you. Me. <laughs> All right. So the first thing um, is always you don't want to dr dry fire a bow. Dry firing a bow means pulling it back and letting it go without an arrow in it. All right. It. Um, if you do that, you could uh, crack the limbs and it has potential to break. So always, anytime you pull the bow back, if you're going to let it go, make sure there's an arrow in it. The next thing is when you do knock an arrow into this rest here, uh, you want to treat it like a loaded gun. So you'll knock your arrow on that string and slide it down into your rest. Once you have your arrow in the rest, keep it pointed down range at all times. All it takes is a little flick on this string for that arrow to be shot. So okay. just be very careful with that. And I think I'm about ready. But I remember one thing they used to do. Yep. We used to yell, is the range clear? Fantastic. <laughs> I missed the whole doggone thing, didn't I? <laughs> Must be the contacts, dog. It's got to be. It could be. Yeah. Dude, something wrong with your arrows, <laughs> man. <laughs> man, this is like not as easy as I remember. <laughs> there it is, baby. That was the bullseye. Yeah, that sorry. was the money shot right there. Yeah. Once I got my groove, there was nothing stopping me. Now, I couldn't leave Ryan out, so I challenged him to a little two competition. But I know you probably got some skills of your own, right? Uh, a little bit here and there. Yeah. OK. So. Why don't you grab a bow and let's do something right here? Unless you got better skills. Well, if you want to make a competition, we better go a little bit further then. That's what I was <laughs> waiting on, the competition. Let's move over to maybe that one over there. That sounds great. Let's do it. Hold oh, oh, on, oh. hold on. How you got a release? I don't have one. Try another one.
We really wanted to create something that people could come out and have access to that they typically wouldn't anywhere close to a major city. Uh, and that's kind of the goal behind here and what we've created to really allow people to come out and try new things and find new hobbies and passions that they'll have for the rest of their lives out here. Man, Ryan, I'm having a ball, man. Fox Hall Sporting Club, so much to see and so much to do. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Our guest host, Natalie King, now takes us to a highway that may seem a little different, but if you're into food, you may want to pay close attention. There's no other place in the state, and probably the world, that serves up such a diverse array of delectable offerings to tantalize your taste buds, all on one street. Welcome to Buford Highway. Located just northeast of Atlanta, this seven-mile stretch of road has become a local gem for food aficionados, as well as a taste of home for many ethnic groups. Our first stop on our Buford Highway tour is Canton House. Hey, Ken, one of my favorite people in Beaver Highway. Ni hao, xie xie gong, jing yin wa shi jian. Owner Cam Vong came to America after experiencing many hardships in Vietnam. United States, it is a very, very, very good country. Opened in 1999, Canton House is known for Chinese dim sum, Classic dim sum items include steamed pork buns, shrimp dumplings, and for the adventurous, chicken feet. But don't just fill up on dim sum, there's plenty more to eat on Buford Highway. Our next stop is Goo's Bistro. Goo's Bistro features one of my absolute favorites, spicy citron noodles. Minced pork and scallions. Chinese believe not to cut their noodles so that you keep it in long life. Look how long these needles are. Yay! Not in the mood for Chinese noodles? How about a noodle soup in the form of Vietnamese pho? Written as pho, but pronounced as pho, Nam Pham serves it up by the bowl full. Fresh basil, a splash of bean sprouts, jalapeno. I'm going to skip that one this time. Craving just a quick bite? Sweet Hut is your best bet, serving up baked goods with an Asian twist. I have a hard time controlling myself here. Obviously, this is not for the gluten intolerant. And of course, you can wash it all down with a delicious bubble tea. Mmm, so refreshing. Buford Highway is an apex for authentic Asian cuisine, but it's also home to many authentic Hispanic eateries. One great example is Carnitas Machocan. Located in the heart of Plaza Fiesta, Carnitas Machocan offers up delectable Mexican dishes. Carnitas means pork, and Michoacan is one of the states of the 32 that we have in Mexico. In Mexico, we, we use the entire pork. You don't waste anything. I'd like to try something that's kind of a specialty. Is that one that's popular with the locals? Yes, the tortas ahogadas is the torta. First, we put the bread, we grill it. And once we grill it, um, we put the carnitas, we put a little bit of lettuce, and we close the, the torta, which is kind of like a sandwich. Now, am I supposed to eat this with my fingers or with a fork? Uh, actually, with a fork. If you want to add a little bit of spiciness, Ooh. then you can add this one. I see it eating through the cup already. <laughs> You're looking at me like I might melt after I eat it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if you're not too full from tortas, hop on over to Machu Picchu Restaurant, a great place for Peruvian ceviche. My favorite ceviche. Beautiful. Thank you, Zoila. Wonderful. Sweet potato, yuca, and some fresh ceviche for you. To wrap up this tasty tour, let's stop by Rincon Latino Restaurant, where they're serving up savory Salvadorian pupusas. This is one of my favorites. I like putting it with the slaw. This is some pickled cabbage. And then to top it off, some salsa. Love it. 
Love it, love it. Buford Highway is a culturally diverse area with culinary delights bound to impress people from all walks of life. So come on down for a taste and a tour. You won't be disappointed. And if you're like a Chinese Southern Belle, you might just feel right at home. From the highway to the coast, where I found a sailboat with a captain who's going to teach me how to navigate the open seas. Harness the wind and glide the open seas. It's a perfect mix of pleasure and sophistication. Sail! Captain Steve Horton has sailed off these Savannah shores for quite a few years, and now he offers his vessel known as Zingara to folks like me who want to experience the exhilaration of understanding the art of sailing. Sail! It's a 38 footer. 18,000 pounds, points and sails very well. Now I'm going to let you take the helm here in just a minute. Already. And if you'll keep her between the hard places, kind okay. of in the middle, I'm going to get rid of some lines and fenders and uh, get her ready to, to sail. I'm sailing away. We've been going about two minutes. Captain Steve already trusts me behind the helm here. Looks like he's doing all the work. No icebergs, no rocks, no manatees. We're good to go. You can begin your sailing journey at the Bull River Marina, located in between Savannah and Tybee Island. Here you can rent a boat, rent a kayak. They'll take you out on dolphin tours, maybe an eco tour. But today, for me, it was sailing aboard the Zangara with Captain Steve, where the dolphin tour was just a bonus. You know, I think they may be mating there. I think we may be interrupting something. Here. Really? But of course, in tight quarters in the marsh, even when dolphin watching, you have to pay attention to your vessel. You see, when the wind changes course, you alter your game from brain to brawn. But of course, the brain can never fully check out because there are always about three things going on at once. Just didn't know I'd be getting a workout. It's not really a teaching excursion. So if they have questions, and I'll tell them everything that you know, as we go, everything mm -hmm. I know, but it's not meant for you to walk away from here and go jump on a boat and go sailing. I, I right, well, I can do it, that. but... Yeah. <laughs> Behind the helm right now, there's always a few things you gotta look out for. Number one, sandbars, not icebergs, sandbars. You gotta check your depth here. Right now, we're about 16, 17 feet, so that is good. You're checking for the change in the wind. You get to see the dolphins, you're looking for them. You're looking for the fish that are jumping out of the sea. And of course, you have to look out for pirates. However, once you hit the open water and have plenty of depth, you do find moments to relax. Captain Steve is both an incredible teacher and sailor. He let me take the wheel, but he also put me to work. You all right with that? I like that, yeah, yeah. Get the adrenaline going. And of course, no matter how cliche, there will be no King of the World references. I'm just gonna do this and say nothing. There's a small town in Georgia known as Richland where something very special is going on. Let's head down there with guest host Raven Toronto and her father to see what the buzz is all about. Did you know that Richland is the third licensed producer of alcohol, Dad? Richland, Georgia? That's right. They're also a crafter of artisan rum. Now, I know what you're thinking at home. When you think about rum, you think of the Caribbean. So what better way to see if this Georgia rum is legit than bringing you along, my Puerto Rican father. Let's do these. That's all right. Richland is a small rural Georgia town with an old world setting, yet only a few hours south of Atlanta. The origins of Richland rum date back to the late 1990s. It all started when owners Eric and Karen Vock were looking for land to grow sugarcane. And we looked all around North Georgia, the beautiful mountains and west uh, or uh, east in the medicine area and then came south. And then all of a sudden found out that this is as far north as sugarcane 
grows. And this is an area that used to produce sugarcane in the past. And that's when all of a sudden the connection between a desire to own some land and the old dream of growing sugarcane and making rum met. And we said, yeah, this is it. This is where we need to find, find some. And uh, about eight miles from town, we, we bought a farm. Uh, Vinnebroek, Dutch for ponds and brooks, is the farm where it all began for Richland Distilling Company. The mayor of the city of Richland knocked on our doors. He said, you have to come to Richland. Although we live in Stewart County, we never go there because there is, there's nothing there. He said, exactly, there's nothing in Richland and I want you in downtown Richland. With moving the distillery from the farm to downtown Richland, this field to glass experience has been attracting tourists ever since. This is where you see the fermentation process and the distilling process. The fermentation tanks are behind the toads. There are, in total, there are four of them. That's where the sugarcane syrup is being converted into alcohol. This one is almost done. The yeast has changed to this beautiful, complex mix of alcohols and aromas. What you see is the last phase of converting the sugar into alcohols. What happens if I push my dad in there? Would he be okay? He'd be very happy. Be for very <laughs> now it was time to meet up with the distillery manager, Roger, to get the next steps in this rum making process. How does it come together? Well, I'll take the pump right there and pump it over into the front of these. I'll light them up and in about four hours it starts doing this. Um, you can actually taste this. This is virgin rum. Try it, yeah. Woo! Yeah. God, he's so smooth. It's a, it's a, a kind of a fruity taste at the start and then it's a, it's a smooth all the way down your tongue. It's not harsh. That's what I'm looking for, the change there. You know, smell and, you know, where we're smelling right here, it sort of gives you a, kind of an idea of what's coming down the pipeline. That's good. Uh, the aging room, or the barrel house, is where the real magic happens. The rum is aged for at least two to three years in white oak American barrels. From the aging room to the tasting room, my father and I get to try the final results of this award-winning rum. The first thing you should do is smell. Oh. I mean, the, the aromas That's, are beginning that's to, amazing. I mean, to, it smells amazing. Is that better than island rum? Oh my god, I mean, you, <laughs> smell, you, smell, you, can, you can tell smooth because smells smooth. No, they're, they're very prevalent. Vanilla, caramelly, butterscotch. You guys should make candles, this rum candles. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the next process. You can't drink the candles, baby. <laughs> that doesn't matter. All right, so while well, y'all talk, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna Can like, we do these? Yeah. Salud. 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 You gonna choose this one? There you go. It just goes down differently than anything else. That can get you. Get me in trouble right there. Well, honestly, <laughs> chug the whole thing. But that's 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 what you get with an an, an all natural, carefully crafted in the process yeah. product. Where does this rank on your list? Uh, it's got to be uh, top two, top three. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Fantastic! Fantastic! <laughs> in spite of the fact that we can do tours and are now also allowed to have people taste a tiny little bit of, uh, of rum, we cannot sell directly to the public. Georgia is a strict three-tier system where the manufacturer or the importer can only sell to a distributor and the distributor can only sell to either 